Well, I guess yeah. we can go from from that in regard to Grenache and then what? Everett, what Sam, 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 try, try, try the two here. Yeah. So then <clears throat> what? Everyone sort of knew Grenache is that again the big heady days of drinking big heavy black wines and Grenache was a little bit um, lighter. Yeah. You know, obviously that GSM category. Yep. Um, came about because um, you're adding a bit of Shiraz and yep. Mataro for depth and tannin and all the rest of it. So this is an example. So this first one is a Grenache Mataro Shiraz um, yep. from a, a vineyard planted in 1857, yeah, 58-ish. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, thank you. And then back in the old days when they planted those vineyards, there's always some Mataro Shiraz, some even some Malbec or whatever it is amongst, yep. amongst the vines. So um, <clears throat> this first one is essentially a single vineyard, single pick. So yep. found a section of the vineyard where it's quite Mataro and Shiraz heavy so i'm talking yep. about 10 15 percent yep. um, of the grenache um so that's just picked as one pick um yep. uh, this is fermented 100 percent whole cluster um this eden valley vineyard we tried the reason from it from the start yeah um again that that soil profile just gives a there's not that much eden valley around eden valley grenache around by the way um mostly yeah, yeah. it's on the brosser floor but yeah, okay. the stone garden vineyard would have been set up to produce fortifies back in the day um yeah. so this just gives a i guess a good example of what a lot of Grenaches will be labelled as Grenache, but there's a lot of the old vine Grenaches, but they've always got some sort of other bits and pieces amongst it, and that gives mm. it that bit more depth and breadth um, from the vineyard point of view. So, I guess Sorry, the, the, it, that. yeah, <laughs> but a fuel blend point of view. I mean, it's pretty rare beast, you know, 160 year old Grenache from Eden Valley. Um, yeah. So that's just pick it, chuck it in the bins. Again, walk on it, pretty similar to this one. Just let it be. Um, it sits on its stalks again for about three weeks, uh, yep. and then it just goes into older punchings and, yep. and left alone. So single vineyard wine, but it does have it's Grenache with other bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I find that that vineyard gives a bit of, a, even though it's it's quite, it's not brutish, but it's got a bit of power behind it. It's more power with elegance, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a, that is absolutely fascinating wine. And that would, again, a lot of these wines, most of them are aged, when they're in punch and they're on lees, um, yeah. and they're quite, I don't really, I'm not that fastidious that I have to lift the bung every week and check it. And so yeah. they're quite reductive in their aging. And yeah. so when you do open them, they have a long way to go to, yeah, to express yeah, yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. so you know they look it looks quite tight and that and then you leave it for a little while and you get more perfume and then it just goes yeah, on I, so. I would, uh, I'm going to steal a glass of that um, before you go and just leave it uh, yeah, over the course of the day yeah. and just watch it because I can it's already drinking beautifully even though the cork's just been popped yeah um, your take on Grenache Shiraz Mataro and what each variety contributes to that wine so this yeah, so I mean <clears throat> I'm a massive fan of Mataro. I love it. Um, so, uh, beautiful. And it's it can be austere and tannic, and yep. so you're not having the fruit to support. Yeah. And it can be quite meaty and funky, which I don't mind either. Um, and so, and then, I mean, if you look at, for example, <coughs> that, that Grenache, it's like pure and um, yeah. spicy, but a bit cherry and whatever. And yep. so then people are going, well, I want a bit more heaviness than that. I'm going to add some Mataro to give a bit of yep. spine and, yep. and, and focus the middle palate a bit. And then in the reverse, you get Shiraz, which is all mid palate and yep. a bit gooey and friendly. Yep. You add that and that sort of offsets what the Mataro is bringing as well. So you've got a more even <clears throat> mouthfeel from all those varieties put together. Yep. So um, that's what people... And, you, and I make a wine called Moonlight Run, which is a Mataro um, Grenache Shiraz. Yep. Everyone still calls it GSM, but it's yep. Mataro. Well, that's 75% Mataro. Yep. And so you, a bit fascinating wine. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And it's spicy, but you're adding... In the reverse, you've got Mataro, which is quite, I'm talking about steer and, and tannic. You're adding Grenache just to soften that a little bit and yeah, adding Shiraz. Yeah, yeah, so you can do yeah. it in, you can do it in, <clears throat> and you can do it with any other variety, but it just seems they work so well together. Um, Beautiful combination. There's, there's some lovely characters. This is just changing with every sniff at the moment. Yeah, and it's, it's quite getting, perfumed as well. Yeah, something completely different every time I um, give that a whiff. So, yeah, look, loving that. Uh, loving the complexity in it. Um, it has got spice, perfume, fruits, and so many different fruits. Uh, and and there's, there's, there's still a freshness and a vibrancy about it. There's, there's nothing about, you know, there's no, you're not looking at a jammy kind of fruitcake-y bomb. Um, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's a delicious, delicious wine, and, uh, and it, it's, it's so together. It's like you wouldn't, yes. just, you know, it's, some wines you can, you look at it and go, geez, I can see a whole lot of different things going on that, you know, I, I just want to come together. But that's, that's together now. And the, and the quality of the tannin. Yeah, I think it's got, and also that sort of menthol coolness that offsets the tannin and all the rest yeah, of it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I really like that, that side of it. And it's got a bit of tartness to it in a good way for me, mm-hmm. um, which I like in wines. So, and yeah. then, yeah. And yeah, that's, a, that's a profile and that's beautiful. Yeah, and that's, that's you can see that. That Stone Garden Vineyard, it's yeah, sort of yeah. the hallmark of that vineyard. Do you have to chuck much acid in that, or is it sort of nothing? Nothing. Seriously? Yeah. Man. Yeah. So it's that's like, it's, it's funny. Wine. If you're doing like the we're talking about natural wine and that sort of stuff, I mean that's got say twenty parts free of sulphur in it. Yeah. That's the only thing that's in it. Yeah. But 
what people think of natural wine, they, that doesn't fit the marketing of that. that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. So there's a big way to go in those sort of regards to what that means for yeah. people. And same, I mean, yeah. same with that's got a bit of sulfur. So yeah. um, in that regard, that's what the vineyard gives you, a bit of sulfur. I think it's got a long life ahead of it if you want to, but I'd like drinking it now. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I, you know, for my preference is, is probably a bit more mature than, than yours. Um, but that's that's a beautiful thing mm. about wine, that you can choose when to drink it. And yeah. There is a, there's a window where it's drinkable. Yeah. Before then, it's raw, and yeah. after then, it's over the hill. It's past it, yeah. And, uh, but there is a window, and it's up to personal preference. But that is an absolutely smoking wine. I, 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 I just love the, the layering of flavours, aromas, the textures. It's it's just beautifully balanced, great harmony. Although it's, you know, 14.5% alcohol, it doesn't look yeah, hot. Yeah. It looks, you know, it looks fresh and vibrant. Um, you know, just, yeah, cracking wine. We've got, I mean, talking a bit of winemaking junk here with regards to conversions we picked this at about 13 and a half yeah and every year this vineyard converts yeah, from bone yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever yeah, happens yeah, yeah, yeah. it always ends up <clears throat> about a bone a bit higher than you actually pick it so, so, so what jason's talking about is the efficiency of yeast effectively <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the bastards <laughs> seem to just be getting more and more efficient over, that, yeah. over year after year and yeah. uh everyone used to say one bone may one percent alcohol now yeah. it's one to 1.1 1. 1, yeah, roughly. yeah. And just keeps... and, uh, so you, you get uh, you get that extra extra percent. Um, yeah, it's but, amazing. Uh, look, that's 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 looking beautiful. Uh, it's a uh, cracking wine, man. And, um, um, and so the we're going to segue into this one. Yeah, a yeah. different a different blend. Yeah. So this is a, if you're talking about what what different things bring in that regard, and we're going from this is a field blend of. Yeah. It's mostly. I mean, people will pick this and call it Grenache. It's just got bits and pieces in it. Yeah. We've identified yeah. that. This is four different parcels from four different vineyards. Yeah. Picked within about two or three days of each other. Yep. Yeah. And then all just chucked in the one ferment. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got Grenache from this vineyard, a bit of Cinso from a vineyard I grow, a bit of Matara from a vineyard I grow as well, and then a bit of... Um, so you just keep adding to the ferment? Yeah, so basically start with... Because um, it's hard because Shiraz ripens earlier, and yeah, Grenache yeah, yeah. later, and Shiraz Matara, I mean Cinso Matara a bit later. So it's just mainly to find sites that ripen within each other. Yep. And so usually the Shiraz is first in, just walk on it, um, a bit of Grenache in, just walk on top of that, and then a bit yep. of Matara Cinso at the end. So it's yep. been about three or four days with each other. Yeah, yeah. And while these takes... It's not, it's not terribly long. No. Yeah, this takes a while to build up. Yeah, Pierre de Coupe, you know, yeah. to, to bloody start the rest <laughs> of it. goes. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to see, because I've always been a fan of blending, um, keeping things separate and blending it later. Yeah. And I thought, hang on, what if I just chuck it all in at once? Would yeah. it, my idea was that it would... I think if you blend the wines, you can see what each variety gives you. Yeah. If you put it all in together, it almost becomes its own varietal, if yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I can pick through a blended, like you know, one of the Rhone style blends, which has been blended. You go, I can see the Matara, I can see the Grenache. I think with this, yeah. can you see all that, or does it look like its own, it's own funny. thing? Isn't it funny? Because um, I, I uh, you know, you guys like Bukestel and, 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 and a lot of the guys down in Shadow Nerf will, will do everything separately and, uh, and then uh, pull it together at the end. And some, I, I don't know, I don't know whether are there guys in Shadow Nerf that uh, do the co ferment? I assume they, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting because I immediately, as soon as you said you were doing that, I thought I, it, it just took my head to uh, something that I've noticed that if you extend a ferment out in length um, uh, through a sort of a relatively active phase, yeah. um, that quite often it can result in, in um, some more depth of your mid palate. Yeah. And um, even just those, those, those few extra days that that's potentially pushing that out. Yeah might have an impact there. It's, I mean, geez, how hard is it to know? Unless you can do the experiment yeah. <laughs> and, and, and compare them side by side, so that's sort of a bit of a hunch and a guess. And yeah, a, it is, I mean, that's... Sometimes, and particularly with the quantities, I mean, how, how much of that are you you making at the moment? That's like, um, <clears throat> that was like 800 litres. Yeah, it's bugger so, all, isn't bugger it? Bugger yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But that, that was just a, again, it's reinvigorating. I've always been the belief you'd make one separate and blend them later. What happens if you do yeah. it from day, day one-ish, you know, and yep, just yep. see what happens? Because you don't have a choice after that. It's got to be what it's yeah. going to be you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same with single yeah. vineyards they're going to be what yeah. they're going to be whereas you know some other wines you have a bit more of a chance to then mm. if something's deficient you can mm. work around with it so mm. you have to find the best fruit get it in the best condition and let it go and yeah. that just shows the tannin more for me um than this wine yeah um but then again that's the i think it's thought because the shiraz is um smaller berry more stalks in it same yeah. with Matara, i think you're yeah. getting more stalk to yeah, to do, yeah, so yeah. you're getting more tannin picked up well, from that. But different, then, different stalks as well, you know, yeah. different, different plot of fruit. Different levels and, and all the rest uh, of it. You know, different age of vines, you know, who knows how much. Who knows what's going on. Yeah. going and <laughs> yeah. building in unless you, you pull it apart and run it through a thousand bits of scientific yeah. kit, you're never going to know. But Take it it's, it's, it's interesting because the, the, the tannins in that, for me, are just slightly edgier. Mm. Um, in no way raw, but just slightly edgier, particularly that sort of, that, that, that you've got that, um, that sort of front mid palate impact. Yep. 
uh, of tannin. And it, it works really well with that, with that wine. Uh, yeah, I like it. But every time I bottle this, the week after I try it, because the fruit's been knocked out a bit, <laughs> yeah. I go, oh, it's too tannic again. And then, <laughs> and then you try it four weeks later and just go, Oh, that's what I was looking like. It's, it's a, yeah. the vineyard we've been making sure ours off. We have been having the same battle. Yeah. I'm just like, oh shit, have I, you know, I've, yeah. I've overdone it. I've overdone it. I've yeah. overdone it. And then, you know, we stick it in a bottle and, you know, for the first three months, I'm like, ah, oh, I've overdone it. And then, you know. And well, then you just got to trust back. yourself. Yeah. And so you, you can almost, it's, it's, it's sort of that rule of thumb that, uh, that I sort of tend to get used to. You go 10% past where you reckon it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll come in, come together. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, so I was just trust I mean, if you... Looking all the way through, you like it, you like it, it's going to bottle, you like it. Then you go, yeah. well, that's fine, it's going to, yep. it'll find its way back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Hey, um, so by comparison again, uh, blended wines we've got here with combinations of Grenache, Rath, Matara, and Cinso in here. And um, I think two cracking wines, um, two different styles. Um, you know, I'm just seeing a lovely theme through all of your wine of layering of flavour, layering of texture. There's, there's a lot of complexity in them, great depth and length, great harmony straight off the bat, yeah. um, straight out of the bottle. And uh, I, I am, yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, it confirms everything from the first time I tasted your booze that uh, you, you, you're doing a great job, mate. So uh, loving those. So and just behind them, we're talking about <clears throat> the theory behind this rocket comes from, yeah. we're talking about the varieties bring different things, you know, the Grenache and that bring different things. I mean, yeah. I'd use the... The theory of relativity or whatever that every action is an equal and opposite reaction and that's where the rock, rocket comes from so you know grenache and all that have an equal fruitiness but they will have yeah. opposite reactions when they put you put them together so that's where that rocket comes from well. uh, look these are a bit of science nerd for you yeah uh, look, that works for me i'm i'm, I'm in